My dad grew up as a military brat and his family moved around, but they were based mostly in Delaware. And at the time, if, if he wasn't, if they weren't the only black family, they were one of the few. And he would be discriminated against because he was black. So by the time he got into college, he would be discriminated against. He went to a black college. He would be discriminated against because they said he talked too white. Yes. And then he played the kick drum in the band. So when he would go to the club and the music was playing, where would he clap his hands? Where the kick drum is. Yeah. So it's the opposite of where everyone else right, exactly. was clapping their hands. And uh, this is the most elegant and tasteful person that I know. And when my mom, when, they, when, when the school suggested like the hurting systems, because what they do is take the, um, the black community and they separate us. And they separate the families and the educated, uh, they, they, you know, they push this, you know, need for higher education. And us as blacks, we discriminate against each other and say, well, I got my PhD and you don't have your PhD, so I'm better than you. And so my mom, she had a PhD and she was influenced to uh, move to the south side of Chicago and take this job at Chicago State University. And she told my dad, if you come, if you come for us, you know, you'll never see him again. Because, you know, the media ridiculed me for getting the house next door to Kim to see my children. And they even said that I was stalking her and her new boyfriend because I bought the house next door to see my children. And I, that's, that's how I knew that, that, uh, that my mom had said that to him. I said, Dad, you know, they moved us to one of the most dangerous, agreed upon to be one of the most dangerous places in the world. It's almost like they tried to kill me or something. Uh, I said, Dad, why didn't you ever, why'd you never come to get us? And that's when he told me, that's when he told me that she was told that. You know, there's so many things that are put in Kim's head. You know, they bring influencers, like, no one ever knew where Corey Gamble came from. No one in the fashion world knows where Gabby came from. These people were practically made in a laboratory, in my opinion. And one of the things that they're really good at doing is being nice and being likable. And what they do is for people that have some form of influence, whether it's an educated black woman like my mother that became the head of the English department at Chicago State University, or whether it's the most influential uh, white woman on the planet, being my ex-wife, they have people that are around them at all times telling them what to be afraid of. It's like not what to do or say specifically, it's what to be afraid of. And if you have a person that isn't afraid of them, you know, like a Russell Brand or yeah. Candace Owens, or, right. it's not that we have to agree right. no. with this, but they're not afraid. They're not afraid to state what their opinion is. Yes. Every, no one is God and everyone has an opinion. It was interesting. A friend of mine told me that uh, Chris and Kim had called him because he had influence inside of the black community uh, and had called him uh, to say, oh, to get him to influence people to take the vaccination. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't have an opinion on that. I just want to state that as a flat statement. But it was, it was wild that I didn't know how close my own wife was to the Clintons. I didn't know, you know, I, I, I didn't realize it at the time. That you were married to her. And well, I was married to her. How close was she to the Clintons? I mean, cell phone away, like, or hey, tell Ye to say this away, or hey, go out and use your platform to push uh, the vaccination away. I mean, not away, but like, take the away part. But what's your prayer life like? Do you pray a lot? This is a prayer.
we're in constant prayer. I thought Hail Mary came to me, uh, not in a Catholic way, but more like in a Tupac way, like, come with me, <laughs> Hail Mary, I'm gonna run quick, see, what do we have here now? Do you wanna ride or die? Na, 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 na. Have you ever heard that? Yeah. It's like a Negro spiritual. It's a chant. <laughs> it is, you know, it, it puts you in that mode. I got a song that I made. It was like a mix, it was a hybrid of that and Led Zeppelin. And it went, it goes, it's like my best song. La, 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 wait till I get my money right. La, 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 then you can't tell me nothing right. And people, I mean, I can open up this stuff. I can open up this, I can open up tours with this song. I, well, I wanted to point out this hybrid. You know, it's like if you see Zombie 1, uh, Zombie Land 1 and Zombie Land 2, or Terminator or anything, they always make the, the characters a little bit badder in the next generation, next yeah. generation, next generation. So that's, you know, Kim is like a hybrid. She's not just Marilyn Monroe. You know, she's also, um, she's also a fashion person. She's also a mom. She's also an activist. She's a lawyer. She's a multi-billionaire. You're, she's hot, she's one of the most beautiful people of all time, you know. This is a different level of uh, video game character now. And when you see a headline that says, Kim says, oh, I'm gonna stay single forever, that's the indoctrination. Like, because they want this person to tell all the little girls out there that they need to be single forever. You know, all moms, I know there's definitely people who watch this Do you, do you think that? So you don't think that's an organic, natural thing? I mean, that is a message that she is being used to send. Absolutely. Think about the song, Don't Talk About Bruno, no, 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 which already sounds weird, like it's, you know, talking about like an uncle or something that did something wrong if they say, don't talk about Bruno, right? But, uh, in the song, listen to the lyrics, it says, the man of my dreams will be slightly out my reach. And I just see my kids running around. And now you look up and my kids are going to a school that teaches black kids a complicated Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa doesn't, you know, so they don't teach, even Christmas itself, Christmas, they don't teach it at Sierra Canyon. And what they do is take all of the celebrities the actors, the basketball players, and they throw them in this one school and they indoctrinate the kids. So my son saw them as brilliant. So right now, they're looking to figure out how to indoctrinate him to make him be another part of the system. I have a choir at my school, so uh, right now, We've come to a compromise, but I'm not finished because I don't compromise, but we come to a compromise when my kids go to my school after school and they learn choir. I sat there with my son and he came and he said, why do I need to sing? I don't even go to your school. So imagine a 16 year old version of that guy, the 26 year old version of that guy where the father doesn't have say so of what the kids are watching, what the kids are wearing, what the kids are eating, who the kids are hanging out with. Ray Kurzweil said, we have the information needed to have a human utopia, but we're led by the least noble, most greedy people. There's a solution that can bring happiness to so many more people. I even had this idea about, you know, the connection of big pharma to farms by having localized farms. With more localized farms, you can use less pesticides. If you have less pesticides, then you have less diseases. And have Big Pharma invest in the local farms. And they'll actually make more money. I'm not one of the people that go up and say, hey, I wanna stop anybody from making money. The people that make money and the powers that be I am your true Nikolai Tesla. Life. 
Do you think the society discourages parental involvement, parental influence over the children? Um, I mean, society is like a big term. You mean it the, is? Well, you had the, said that your media. father was discouraged from, you know, being in your household, and you have been discouraged from being in your children's lives. Yeah. Do you think this is a thing that happens to a lot of people in America, to a lot of men? Absolutely. And a lot of men deal with a mother and the, the, um, the baby mama and the mother-in-law ganging up to take the child away. Yeah. And not wanting to give the dad, the, the dad uh, his, his say-so. Like, there was even a moment where we were arguing about North's uh, basketball coach. And I had to say, like, I went from not making a basketball team in eighth grade to winning championships in ninth grade by practicing every day. And North likes good basketball. And I'm going to come and practice with her every day. I'm also going to pick the other coaches that work with her. And now that she's back, uh, playing basketball, this is the most confident person in the league. She's like the Dennis Rodman. Uh, and when North snatches the ball out of a, of a girl twice her size and she comes over to the side, I tell her, don't let anyone take anything from you ever. Don't let anyone take anything from our family. Don't let anyone take our company. Always protect your brothers and sisters.